It's Wednesday morning. It is Wednesday the 6th of May. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday. And let's see what we've got in the workout today. Alrighty guys, so we've got a 15 minute workout. Right? And what we're doing is we're spending 5 minutes doing those few movements. We're doing 4 minutes there, 3 minutes there, 2 minutes there, 1 minute there. So we do a decreasing time range. So we are trying to maintain intensity over each set of minutes, but because we're decreasing the time, we manage to keep the intensity up. Okay, so your first five minutes, what you're doing is you're doing V-ups and mountain climbers. So what you're gonna start to feel, the core in the midline is gonna work really hard. There is some shoulder stability going on in the mountain climbers. Then we've got shuttle runs going. So that's gonna give the opportunity for your legs and your lungs to work a bit. Another three minutes, 10 V-ups, 20 mountain climbers. We're doing as many rounds of 10 V-ups and 20 mountain climbers as we can in that certain run, uh, the time that we've given. Two minutes of shuttle runs, and we've got one minute of 10 V-ups and 20 mountain climbers. So we've got three sets right, of V-ups and mountain climbers that we're trying to do as many rounds and reps during those times, and we've got two sets of running only. Okay. There's no rest built in at all, so we're trying to get you to do as much work in a total of 50 minutes as possible. Right? And then our score is going to be the total amount of rounds and reps. Okay? And we're also going to then count the distance run on your shuttle runs. So that's the workout. Let's have a quick look at scaling options for you today. So, first movement, we're looking at V-ups. So our V-ups are going to be like this. All right, so first, first option for the full movement. Okay, what we're looking for is chin going to be up off the floor, arms into an overhead position, and we want to make sure that this rib cage is pulling down. So we don't see this rib cage pulling up. Make sure this lower back here is pulling flat into the floor, rib cage connected, and we're going to keep the legs straight, and you know, pull up body and legs into the air at the same time. So from there, stomach tight, hop, hop, one, two, three, four, five, right? Keep this leg straight, keep the stomach tight, make sure the low back is safe. If that is a little bit too difficult for you, okay, but your low back is still okay, then you can bend the knee slightly. Still arms up, chest up, low back flat, and pull up, one, two, okay, it is easier with the knees bent. If that is difficult, Right, and the back doesn't like it, then you can do a normal sit-up, chin tucked in, lay the arms forward, touch the top of the toes, normal sit-up, right, sit-ups of those, 10 sit-ups, and if that is not great, and you don't like that hinging in the hip, then you can do either just crunches or ankle taps, or you can do the cycling left and right to make sure the lower back is flat. If any of that is uncomfortable in any kind of movement, you can even just challenge it by holding, make sure the head is safe, make sure the neck's got, not getting too tired, make sure it's not going to the back of the neck. And even just holding that position is gonna challenge the stomach. So you're just doing like a, a hold in the air. All right, so that's gonna be your V-up progressions. Then we're doing mountain climbers. So there's two ways to do this today. You can either do mountain climbers that are fast, or you can do mountain climbers that are slow. I personally like the, the slow mountain climbers. I think I get more work into my core and my rib cage. I can feel and concentrate on my, my shoulder blades, and my scapula stabilizing a whole lot harder, or you can do them fast. So I'll show this slow. What you're looking for is making sure the shoulders are directly over the top of the hands. Lower back. Okay, legs pressed out, tummy tucked in, you're going to bring one leg in. Make sure this foot at top here doesn't touch the floor. So knee comes up, rib cage pulled up, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all up to 20. So you're doing 10 in total, all right? That's a slow pause. You want to get that pause of the knee holding. As you're pausing there, these obliques are connecting. And that's where the work, both in terms of stabilizing the shoulder girdle, but also the work in keeping that midline engaged. If you want to go slightly faster, it becomes a bit more cardiovascular. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's going to push your heart rate up a whole lot higher. Okay. If you want to go slower, what we're looking for is you just a slightly shorter range of movement. So to scale this, you still want to keep a bit of a plank, and you just one, two, just keep those knees slightly shorter position. Try not to do this with the knees pushing back. All right. Try and keep the shoulders over the top of the hands, feel the rib cage connect, smaller movements. If you need to decrease the range of reps, okay, slightly decrease from 20 reps down to 10 reps in total, to decrease the load and the intensity, you can do that as well. Okay, so that's your V-ups and your mountain climbers. 
pretty much just those two movements that you're really going to feel the work and your shutter runs is easy. Shutter runs, if you've got some place where you can get your 200 meter runs in now, then do, do that, run backs and forwards 200 meters so that you can try and stick to that four minute limit. If you're going to set up shutter runs and do either 10 meter shutter runs or 20 meter shutter runs, set up a, a track for you and do shutter runs for the four minutes, try and get as many shutter runs as you can. The slower you jog, the less intensity, the faster and harder you do the shutter runs, the higher the intensity, right? Try and get that heart rate up. There's only six minutes to really get your heart rate shooting up. If you don't have space to run, you can do a fast feet on a plate, or you can do double unders or single unders or skipping, as well as an option for your shutter runs. All right, and that's it. Total round, five, four is nine, 12, 14, 15 minutes in total of work. That's the work, that's the workout for today. Nice little workout. And uh, if you need a little bit more warm-up briefing, I'm gonna take you through that now. All right guys, so the warm-up. So again, you're outside, you're running. If you're doing in the morning again, go out for your run again. Uh, come back in, either five minutes of shelter runs, skipping, fast feet, anything that's gonna get your heart rate up for those five, five minutes, that's gonna help your cardiovascular system, it's gonna help if your cardiovascular system is warm to hit this workout. Otherwise, you're gonna find you're gonna get three or four minutes into the workout and you're gonna be like, you're gonna hit a bit of a wall. Okay, so five minute run there, just as a warm up, and then we're gonna do a bit of a PVC pipe warm up. We're gonna work on getting this, uh, the shoulders opening up, some mobility across the shoulders and the shoulder girdle. So it's not something that we do a lot of, but it's nice to be able to do something slightly different in the shoulders and maybe work on some PVC pipe skills. So first one, what we're looking for are good mornings. We're doing between six to eight reps of each movement and we are going to do two to three rounds of it. Just have a quick look at what we're going to do again. We're going to look at, we're going to be doing some good mornings. We're doing some behind the neck presses. We're doing some snatch grip deadlifts. We're doing a hang muscle snatch and we're doing a power snatch. Don't let those last two things, if you don't know what they are, don't let them put you off. I'm going to show you what to do with them, okay? So first one, good mornings. What we're looking for in the good mornings is to get the hamstrings, glutes, and lower back activated, warm, and mobile. So we're going to use the movement to stretch the hamstrings, glutes, lower back, and at the same time get this rib cage and the midline connected. So hands going to come behind. If you can do this and your shoulders are comfortable enough and you've got enough stretch across the shoulders, behind the neck is fine. Okay, it just mustn't be like this. All right, so if your shoulders are very tight, rather than bring in front of the movement and hold them in this position here. Okay, so you're holding in front this way. What I want. It's from there. Keep the back straight, chest up. You're going to push the hips backwards, feel the hamstrings stretch, press back. Ooh, shoulders back. I'm looking for a nice stretch of the hamstrings, glutes. Lower back is nice and straight. Stomach is tight, so the work isn't hinging all the way into the lower back. And squeeze the hips forward. One inhale. Hop, stretch. Press. Two stretch. Hop, press. Three stretch. Press. Four. And you're doing between six and eight reps, right? That's going to be your good mornings. Next one is going to be a behind the neck press. Again, if you've got good mobility in the shoulders, you can use this to press. Stomach tight, you're going to press out overhead. Press and back down, okay? Press at the top, you're trying not to press over there. Also, make sure you're not pressing over here. We don't want to overstretch the shoulders. Just in line with the ears. So then the, in, when you are in that overhead position, your bar is in line with the ears in line with your shoulders, hips, knees, ears, in line with the midline, and we're pressing there, okay? Make sure the shoulders are safe. If you find it difficult and you're getting to there in that overhead position, just open your hands slightly, and that should allow you to open up your chest and get the shoulders a bit wider. So the more narrow your hands are in that overhead position, the more mobility you need, okay? So if you're very tight in your shoulders, open your hands, that'll be a bit, a bit easier. So from there, press. Press if you can. If that's not comfortable, press from here. Press. If you are tight in your shoulders, you're probably going to find it looks something like this. You're going to be pressing over here. Right? So you're not going to be directly into an overhead position, but we're still trying to increase your range of movement in that overhead position. All right, so that's going to be our uh, behind the neck presses. Then we're doing a snatch grip deadlift. So snatch grip deadlift, hands are nice and wide. We're going to stand. We're going to go from the sideways first. So we're going to press the hips backwards. Same thing. I'm stretching my hamstrings. Slide the bar down to the knees, slide down the middle of the shins, and slide back up to the knees and open the hips. Hips press back, top of the knees, middle of the shins, top of the knees, hips open up, two. 
hips press back, stand, three, keep the chest up the whole way to the front, hips press back, shins, hips press back, and again, we're just looking to getting this hips moving and opening up, get the shoulders nice and open. That's going to be a snatch grip deadlift. Next thing we're going to be doing is a hang muscle snatch. So all that's going to happen is we're going to keep the hands wide. Okay, and the snatch is taking the bar to an overhead position. Nice and easy. All right, so we're going to go from here, sideways. We're going to just kind of have a dip. We're going to drive the legs, drive the legs, throw the bar into an overhead position. Just make sure you don't throw here. Keep the shoulders safe. Dip, press, dip, and using the legs to drive the body up, press, back down, dip, press. Make sure you're not sliding forward into the knees, make sure you're pushing those knees outwards. So from here, what you do is you're going to push the knees open, okay, not there, knees there. Keep the hips directly under the shoulders so the bum's not going back, go straight down, drive up. Press, dip, drive up, press. Just a muscle snatch. Make sure the shoulders stay safe. Take the hands wide if you need to. You are going to do between six to eight muscle snatches. Then we're doing a hang power snatch. So now what we're doing is we're going to dip from a hang, so slightly deeper to the knees. One, dip, two, dip, three, One, two. So I know that the snatch, sometimes if you're new to it, if you haven't been doing it much, can feel like a complicated movement. The benefit of doing the snatch is that it connects the legs, the hips, the torso, the upper body, helps coordinate movement. It helps the body drive in terms of feeling the power transference into that overhead position. So practice it, okay? It's, a, it's an important skill when it comes to lifting and moving and functional movement. So take some time to practice the snatch. Doesn't matter if it feels funny. It normally feels funny for a while. Some of us haven't done it for a while, so get back onto the PVC pipe, get that brain connected, get that, new, that neurological adaptation and connection going again in the body. Okay, that's gonna be the snatch. So we're gonna do two to three rounds of that, just to review. Six to eight good mornings, six to eight behind the neck presses. Do in front of the presses if you need to, in front of the neck if you need to. Snatch grip deadlift, deadlifts, muscle snatches power snatches all right well if you need to do a little bit of extra shoulder mobility for that overhead position you can start out just by working those shoulders and back and just work that range of movement okay so i don't see the elbows bent keep the shoulders safe i don't want to feel the shoulders happening here i don't see this going on both back chest up backs and forwards Okay, and it's just a nice easy movement in the shoulders you may it may not be that easy for you maybe i would only get to there and back that's fine if that is a good stretch for you you can do that remember you're using either a pvc pipe if you got that a dial stick in the garage an old broomstick an old mop okay make sure something is light try not to do something with the wet mop going on the side okay you can also do some a bit of a flagpole stretch arms are locked out elbows locked out and then you're just stretching in the overhead position and just mobilize a little bit left and right, do five to ten mobilizations on each side. That will help you in that overhead position. So that'll be some good shoulder prep, activating the shoulders, good shoulder mobility. We haven't done a lot that's opened up the shoulders much. We're doing a lot of pressing work, a lot of stabilizing work. So it's really important to uh, undo some of that habitual movement that we've been doing. Then we do some running prep work and some midline prep work to get us ready for the warm up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for. 30 seconds of Superman, so we've got a few different movements. We've got Superman holds, we've got dead bugs, we've got side planks, and we've got side planks. We've got four, four different movements. What we can do, this says here, do 30 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest, or 30 seconds of holding. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do, say, like a 200 meter run, go for a 200 meter run, come back in, we're gonna go through each of the movements, go for a 200 meter run, we're gonna do two rounds of that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're gonna start, 200 meter run, backs and forwards, either in shuttle runs or a skip if you're doing skips. Coming, we're doing 30 seconds of Superman hold. So Superman hold looks like this. All right, Superman hold. I'll do it this way, actually. Coming back down. So if you're going to do an overhead position, do overhead position. 
if you're not doing an overhead position, you can do fingertips touching. So first position is just there, arms locked out, stomach nice and tight, lock the knees, you know, stopping and hold, three, and we're holding for 30 seconds. You've got your little stopwatch, your clock, and you hold. If you can't hold for the full, for the full 30 seconds, hold for five seconds, come back down, stomach tight, hold, five seconds, hold, and come back down, hold, straight leg, hold, five seconds, hold, come back down, right? If you can advance it, if you're a little bit stronger, shoulder blades back, chin tucked in, lift, hold, lock the knees, focus on locking those knees out straight, squeeze the glutes, keep the stomach tight. The more you focus on the glutes and the stomach, the less in the lower back. You're gonna feel shoulders back, chin tucked in, and you're holding the full 30 seconds, if you can hold the full 30 seconds. And then we do a hollow hold. 30 seconds of a hollow hold. And we are doing something nice and tight. Low back pressing into the floor, legs up, rib cage up, and we're holding. Belly button pull down. Hold, and lower if you need to lower, if you can hold it, as long as the lower back stays flat. If you can't, bend the knee slightly, keep the upper body curling up, keep those arms in the overhead position, keep that rib cage connected, as long as the lower back doesn't arch up. 30 seconds of holding there. Next one. 30 seconds of dead bug. So we're doing into the next position, dead bug. Chest is up, arms up, and we're alternating. One, two, three, four, five. Rib cage is connected, lower back is flat, and we're connecting on the rib cage. So that's going to be a dead bug, and then you're doing get ups. So get ups are going to be in your elbows. Plank position, press up, press up, down, one. Press up, press up, down, two. Alternating hands and elbows, press up, press up, down, three. Press up, press up, down, four. Press up, five. Okay, can you really start to feel those abs working? Then we're doing a side plank hold. From there, side plank, feet straight, back straight, holding, make sure the hips aren't dropping up, rib cage connecting. Hold, we're holding for side plank, 20 seconds, 30 seconds side plank on the left, and then 20, 30 seconds side plank on the right. Okay, not that way, just here. All right, and then we're doing sprint on the 20 meters. So if you have a look again, there's two ways of doing it. I know we said we could do a run at the beginning. You can either do the run, 20 meter run, and then do 30 seconds there, 30 seconds there. What may be easier, if you just want to break it up a bit, is you do 30 seconds of shuttle runs, Come back in, 30 seconds of Superman, 30 seconds of hollow rock. Then you do 30 seconds of shuttle runs again. 30 seconds of dead bugs, 30 seconds of get ups. 30 seconds shuttle runs, 20 seconds of side plank, shuttle runs, 20 seconds of side plank, run again, done. So really you can mix this up as much as you want. Do two or three rounds of that. Get nice and warm, get your core fired fire up. You'll really feel the work working. That should be you nice and warm for the workout. We're gonna quickly prep the workouts. So you're going to quickly review what movement you want to use for the workout. Give yourself 10 to 15 V-ups. Give yourself any scaling that you need that's appropriate, uh, either with the knees bent or into a setup for your V-ups, okay, or with your lower back flat. Make sure you find something that's appropriate. And then we're doing mountain climbers. Okay, so if you're in a mountain climbers, either doing a shorter movement or a bigger movement, you're going to do faster or you're going to slow. Decide what movement you're going to choose and do 10 to 15 reps of that. Give yourself a few shuttle runs, make sure you're running warm, and then you're ready for the workout. Alrighty. So, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Do as many rounds and reps as you can of each of those in that allotted time. Write down your scores, post your workouts and your comments, and have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.